Newton Todd A Push. We have a new video today. It's the Bee's Knees by the Big Cheese himself, Mr. Linegar. Let's make history today as we jaw over Unit 3, Day 6. But first, let's do our daily punishment. Long fairy tales have a tendency to dragon. <laughs> dragon, dragon. <laughs> Your key terms for today, the Trail of Tears, the Indian Removal Act, Worcester v. Georgia, the Whig Party, the Anti-Mason Party, the Bank Wars, Specie Circular, the Panic of 1837, the Election of 1836, Martin Van Buren, Stephen F. Austin, Sam Houston, the Battle of San Jacinto, and the Election of 1840. We're going to go over the Trail of Tears and its effects, the bank wars under Andrew Jackson's and its effect, and the major issues facing Martin Van Buren as president. This will take us all the way up until 1840. So, Andrew Jackson is going to do ethnic cleansing. Remember, ethnic cleansing is when you move one ethnic group from one area to a different area. Uh, he's going to do this with the Trail of Tears. Remember, John Quincy Adams... Uh, defended the Cherokee Native Americans when the Georgians were trying to get them out of their country. The Cherokee owned the land. They had uh, they uh, had contracts and legal documents for it. Andrew Jackson, uh, under Congress in the 1830s, Congress is going to pass something called the Indian Removal Act, which is going to force the Native Americans to leave the Carolinas and Georgia and move to Oklahoma. Poor people. The Supreme Court under John Marshall is going to side with the Native Americans and tell Georgia, you cannot do this. However, remember, the Supreme Court does not have an army. The Supreme Court relies upon the government uh, supporting them and, and siding with them. And Andrew Jackson's kind of a dictator. He would not side with the Supreme Court. What Andrew Jackson said after the uh, Supreme Court wrote their decision, and I doubt Jackson read it because he was probably illiterate, was Jackson said, Marshall has made his decision, now let him enforce it. Ooh, I guess those judges are going to try to uh, stop the Georgia militia from doing this. Let's see how they could stop it with their white, with their robes and their uh, wigs. What's going to happen is Jackson is going to give the go-ahead for the Trail of Tears. It's going to force 100,000 American Indians to be moved to Oklahoma. 15,000 will die on the way. The government was supposed to provide them with food, with blankets and stuff. And a lot of times the food was spoiled. The blankets had holes in it and it was subpar. And like the uh, governmental agencies were taking advantage of them. This is on Jackson. This is his fault. One of the other big things that Jackson did was he wanted to get rid of the National Bank. Even though the Supreme Court in McCulloch v. Maryland uh, said that the National Bank was constitutional, Andrew Jackson thought he knew more than the U.S. Supreme Court. So leading up to the election of 1832, we're going to get a new political party. It's the Whig Party. For the most part, the Whig Party is pretty similar to the National Republicans. It's going to be made up of mostly nationalists. However, some people that will join the Whig Party that just hate Andrew Jackson. So like John C. Calhoun believed in states' rights, but he also hated Andrew Jackson, so he'll join the Whig Party. Same thing with John Tyler. Um, so the Whig Party, in general, their ideology is not super consistent, but it's made up of people that really hate Andrew Jackson. It's made up of national Republicans, states' rights people, old-time Federalists. It's going to be led by Daniel Webster, Henry Clay, and John C. John C. Calhoun. It's going to support active government and reform, like the American system, although the states' rights people will not like that. Eventually, some third-party groups, like the Anti-Mason Party, which we'll talk about in a second, are going to join. Also, this is during the time of the Second Great Awakening, so evangelical Protestants will join the Whig Party. One of the big uh, issues in the election of 1832 between and in the election of 1832, it's going to be Henry Clay for the Whigs versus Andrew Jackson for the Democrats. And what's going to happen, the, going to be the big political issue during that election will be the National Bank. The National Bank was up for reauthorization. Uh, Henry Clay is going to try to get, he's going to try to make the second bank of the United States an election issue by trying to, he's going to have Congress pass a law to reauthorize it a couple years early. He knows that Jackson will veto it. 
and it's going to really lead to a dispute between uh, whether we should have a national bank. Jackson and his supporters say nah, and the Whigs say yes. Um, what's going to happen is Jackson will veto the national bank. The bank president will try to pull out money from state banks to hurt the economy to turn support away from Jackson. That's kind of unethical. Uh, Henry Clay will still lose the election to Andrew Jackson, showing that the better man does not always win. Uh, and after the election, Andrew Jackson is going to kill the National Bank. He's going to pull out all money from the National Bank, and he's going to give it to little state banks. Those state banks were called wildcat, wildcat banks or pet banks. Uh, <laughs> so like he, Jackson might have a friend in South Carolina, and he might give him the money from the National Bank. The problem with this was there was no way to monitor those state banks, those wildcat banks or pet banks. And a lot of times those banks would just lead to wild speculation and they would just loan out money. And most of those banks crashed. Um, also, Jackson is going to issue the species circular. Jackson did not like printing money. And he's going to say that all public land needs to be bought with metallic money, like gold and silver. With Jackson killing the National Bank and with all these state banks, these wildcat banks crashing, it will lead to the Panic of 1837, the greatest economic problem in American history. And it was really Jackson's actions that caused this because his war with the National Bank. So going back a little bit, um, during in the election of 1832, we will have our first third party in American history, the Anti-Mason Party. The Anti-Mason Party was formed because there was a former Mason, Freemason, and he wrote a book exposing the secrets of the Freemasons, and then he was killed. There were a lot of conspiracy theories, th thinking that the uh, Freemasons were a cult and that they did all these things like sacrificing children. That's actually not true. In general, the Freemasons do a lot of community service. They're actually pretty good people. Uh, but like this whole party was formed to try to like you know uh, get rid of the Freemasons in America. What's going to happen is both Jackson and Henry Clay were Freemasons, so neither one of them got support from this party. But uh, yeah, it's our first third party in American history. Andrew Jackson, when he got rid of the Second National Bank, he said he got rid of the Second National Bank because it was unconstitutional. The Supreme Court already ruled against this, but Jackson was illiterate, so he probably couldn't even read. Uh, and like I talked to you before, he'll... Uh, take out funds from the National Bank and put it in his uh, pet banks. It will lead to wild speculation. He's only going to allow land to be bought with gold and silver. That's going to cause to a huge panic in 1837. But Jackson thought this was great. He saved America from the aristocracy of national banks. And here's Jackson killing the uh, many-headed monster of the National Bank. Lastly, let's talk about the presidency of Martin Van Buren. There he is, right here. Uh, Jackson, even though he was for Jacksonian democracy and giving the common man a vote, uh, he's going to rig the convention in 1836. He's going to let his good friend Martin Bu Van Buren win the presidency. He'll win the presidency over William Henry Harrison. Van Buren will win the electoral vote, but the popular vote was closer He's not going to be as popular as Jackson. He's not as showman-like. Also, Van Buren becomes president right when the economy collapses because of Jackson's actions. So under Van Buren, they're going to have the Panic of 1837. There's going to be a global depression. People will have no jobs. Banks will be closed because of Jackson putting money in the wildcat banks. Factories will close. Wheat crop will fail. And really, Van Buren does nothing about it. He's going to pass the divorce bill under Congress under Van Buren, which got rid of the last money from the National Bank, and that just made things worse. So Van Buren is not going to be a successful president. Lastly, let's talk about what's going on during this time a little bit foreign policy-wise. During this time, uh, in the 1820s, 30s, uh, Mexico was offering land to Texans to sell. Uh, Mexico was offering land to Americans to settle in Texas. In return, they hypothetically had to get rid of slavery, and they had to promise to become Catholic. But for the most part, Mexico left the Texans along. Stephen Austin was one of the first people. He was given a huge grant of land from the Mexican uh, government. 
what's going to happen is there's going to be a dispute between the Texans and the Mexicans. Uh, the Mexicans are going to stop settlement. They're going to try to, they didn't like the fact that Texas uh, had so much self-government. They thought Texas wanted to join America, which was kind of true. Uh, so Texas will declare independence from Mexico. <laughs> uh, Stephen, uh, Sam Houston will be named the commander of uh, the Texas army. For the most part, the Texas army will get crushed. The Mexicans under Santa Ana will surround one of the Texans' forts, the Alamo. This is where uh, Travis said, I will, shall never surrender, victory or death. All the people in the Alamo were killed except for some women and children. Uh, remember, the Alamo will become a battle cry during the Texas Revolution. Eventually, Sam Houston will trap the Mexican army. The Mexican army had a fiesta. They had a party, and he attacked them when they were still uh, asleep. It, it lasts 18 minutes, and he's able to capture Santa Ana. After he captures Santa Ana, he forces him to sign a peace treaty that gives Texas independence. However, a lot of Texans thought that America would, um, a lot of Texans thought that America would make Texas a state right away, but Texas was a slave state, so at least at first, Texas is going to be its own country. This leads us to the election of 1840. Martin Van Buren, also known as Martin Van Ruin by his Whig opponents, will run against William Henry Harrison again. In the last election, Henry Harrison was running with some, against some other Whigs. The Whigs weren't united, but now it was just Henry Harrison. William Henry Harrison, his vice presidential candidate will be John Tyler. John Tyler was a state's rights former Democrat that hated Andrew Jackson, but he believed in states' rights. People didn't really think they was that big of a deal because he was only the vice president, so who cares? Remember, the Whigs were, for the most part, very nationalistic. Harrison's going to be chosen because he was a war hero and he had no enemies. Harrison will win the election. He'll crush Martin Van Buren. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, guys. But after only four weeks of office... He's going to die of pneumonia. He's going to be the shortest lasting president. He actually made the longest uh, presidential inaugural speech in American history. He made all these quotes in Greek and Latin to show that he was smart. But then he only served for four weeks. He actually died of pneumonia. Uh, some people think that he died from uh, spending so much time outside during the inaugural address. And now we have a problem, kiddos, because John Tyler will be the new president because the uh, William Henry Harrison died. But John Tyler did not agree with the Whigs for a lot of things. John Tyler believed in states' rights. So even though he was a Whig, the only reason he was a Whig was because he hated Andrew Jackson. So he's, he doesn't philosophically agree with the Whig beliefs. So this is going to be problematic. Here's the election of 1840. And as you see it, the light blue represents William Henry Harrison. They just crushed uh, Martin Van Buren and the Democrats in this election. All right, kiddos, that's all I have for you for today. Until next time, d -d 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 deuces, 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 yeah.